Hi, this is John Robbins. In this training session, we're going to be taking a close look at the RS-232 communication system used on the FANUC series control. We're going to cover the setup as well as troubleshooting of this system. RS-232 has been around for almost 100 years. Okay, not quite, but it feels like it sometimes. This communication system has been around since the early 60s. Modern controls still make use of this, even controls employing USB as well as Ethernet connections still have RS-232 ports. Why? Because they work. Most of the files in a FANA control are simple text files that use standard characters. RS-232 works very well sending and receiving this information. FANUC is always backwards compatible. This means that not only will they support the newest forms of communications like Ethernet and USB, but they still offer RS-232. RS-232, also known as serial communications, has gone through several variations, but it's always worked basically the same way. A high-level signal, somewhere between plus 3 to plus 12 volts, represents a zero, while minus 3 to minus 12 volts represents a 1. Yeah, I know that seems backwards, but that's the way it is. The proper combination of these 1s and zeros makes up what's called a packet of data. Each packet of data is sent along through the serial communications port. This particular packet of data, for instance, would represent the letter A. The PC and CNC must agree on how fast they're going to talk, what language they're going to talk in, and who is going to talk first. This is all established using what's called the communications protocol. A protocol is typically written as 9600, even, 7, and 2, X on, X off. The language that's going to be used is either EIA or ISO. Let me explain what this means. The first thing to set up is the language that we're going to talk in. On a FANUC control, you have a choice of EIA or ISO. EIA uses 8 data bits to represent a character or number. ISO uses 7. Most machines in use these days employ ISO. For example, this is how you would write the letter A in ISO. This is how it would show up in EIA. Not much difference, but if you screw up the settings, your backup is nothing but garbage. It's like having a spare tire that's flat. Useless. The protocol settings are made in the machine parameters or in the settings page. If you're in the training class and have access to a simulator, you can see them here. Now what parameters you set on your machine will depend on the type of control that you're using. Go to the TIE website and you will be able to download a list of these parameters. If you're able to send and receive part programs, then you'll be able to back up the machine information without making any changes to the parameters. There are a number of software packages available for the PC that are designed to work with the CNC control. Most CAD CAM programs have a communication system built in. In this session, I'm going to be using a package called NCNet Lite. This is a freeware package available from CADM.com. It's been around for a long time and works very well. It does come with some handy diagnostic tools, although you can use most anything that you want. For this video, I'm going to be using the FANUC 18i control as an example in regards to the RS-232 functions. You'll find that this is very close to the 16, 18, 21, and most other I-series controls. FANUC controls have multiple COM ports that can be used for RS-232. I'm going to use the first COM port in my example. This is port 0. Let's get started setting up the protocol. The easiest place to set the language is in the settings page. Set this to a 1 in order to use ISO. In our example, the first number in the protocol shows how fast we're going to talk. 
all FANUC controls will default to 4800 bits per second. You can change this in the parameter settings. Parameter 103 will allow you to alter the speed. A setting of 10 equals 4800 bits per second. A setting of 11 equals 9600 bits per second. I wouldn't recommend going more than 9600 bits per second when doing a backup on your machine tools. Think of it like a highway. Yes, you can get there a lot faster by going at a higher rate of speed, but there's a better chance of something going wrong. Generally, if the distance on your cable is under 25 foot, you can go with 9600 bits per second. The E in the protocol stands for even. It's used as a rough error check. When the PC transmits a packet of data, say the letter A, it counts the number of high bits. If this count turns out to be an odd number, it will set the parity bit high. This makes it an even number. The CNC looks at the bits in the packet of data when they come in. If they don't add up to an even number, it gets pissed off and asks that it be resent. If it continues to fail, you'll end up with an alarm. It's not a perfect system, but it's the best that's available. You can set the parity to even or odd. You should not set the parity to none if you're using ISO. This is only used with EIA. The 7 in the protocol shows the number of bits that's going to hold the information. For ISO, this will be set to a 7 on your PC. For EIA, you would set this to an 8. The last number is the stop bit. This indicates the end of the packet data. I normally set this to a value of 2. On this control, parameter 101, bit number 0, will establish whether you're using 1 or 2 stop bits. A setting of 0 would equal 1 stop bit. A setting of 1 would equal 2 stop bits. This is the complete packet of data that will be used to represent the letter A. X on, X off. This is used to establish who's going to talk first and when they should stop talking. The FANUC control uses what's called software handshaking. This means that they use the command codes X on and X off in the communication string. When a program is sent from a PC to the FANUC, the information goes into a buffer. When the buffer starts to get full, the CNC will tell the PC to stop transmitting X off. Once it's emptied the buffer, it will tell the PC to start transmitting again, X on. It's very important that the protocol on the PC and the FANUC be set up the same. The cable that's used on the FANUC controls hasn't changed over the years. It's called a null modem cable although you will see a few different variations on this cable. This is the correct pinout for the cable. You'll notice that it only needs three wires. There are a number of jumpers that must be made on the CNC end. Almost all of the machine tools out there are still using the old style DB25 connector. In this case, you would need to jumper pins four and five. You would also need to add a jumper between pins 6, 8, and 20. Not installing the proper jumpers is a common mistake. Other than machine tools, you rarely see the DB25 connectors used anymore. In fact, you don't see RS-232 ports used anymore. When's the last time you saw one on a computer? Nowadays, computers use USB ports for communication. That means you'll likely need to purchase a USB to RS-232 adapter. While these work just fine, there's one problem. The USB ports have a very low voltage and current capability. In order to convert the USB signal into an RS-232 signal, you need to step the voltage up. That reduces the current capability even more. Because of this, the distance that the signal can be sent is very limited. I recommend that you keep your cables to less than 25 feet. Otherwise, you may experience signal degradation. If you need to transmit over a long distance, purchase a true RS-232 port and install it in your PC. 
Back in the early days, RS-232 ports were all DB25 connectors. Later on, they were changed to the DB9 connector shown here. USB to RS-232 adapters use the DB9 instead of a DB25 connector. This pinout shows the complete cable connection for a DB9 to DB25 connector. When using a USB to RS-232 adapter on a PC running Windows, Windows will assign a COM port number to the USB port. This can be changed by going to the Device Manager page. Select Ports and then the Communications port. Under Port Settings, choose the Advanced button. Here, you can assign a COM port number to the USB. In order to send or receive files between the CNC and the PC, there are a couple of things that need to be checked first. First and foremost is the cable plugged in. You'd be surprised how many people forget to check this. By the way, never leave an RS-232 cable plugged into a machine when you're not using it. It provides a nice path for a high voltage spike, such as a lightning strike, to get into the machine. Always unplug it when you're not using it. Also, never unplug the cable while the file is being transmitted. On older controls, this would cause the COM port not to close properly. This can result in a 101 alarm. You may need to blow out the program memory area in order to recover. Back to business. With the cable plugged in, verify that your machine is in edit mode. All communications take place in edit mode. There are some exceptions when doing a memory restore. We'll get into those later. Make sure that the memory protect key is in the release position. Now you should be able to transfer information back and forth between the CNC and the PC. I'll be making individual videos showing how to back up the various control types along with the parameter settings necessary for each. We will also be covering the memory restoration procedure. On older model controls, in order to send a program from the machine to the PC, you would use the output hard key. Later model controls change this to use the punch soft key. Punch is a strange name. Go back to the early days of the NC controls. The machines were controlled by a paper tape. If you wanted to make a backup of a program or parameter file, you would punch holes in a tape. The punch key stayed around for a long time. New style controls changed the soft key to F output for file output. To bring a program into the control, you would use the input hard key or read soft key. New controls use F input for file input. When you press the button to bring a file into the control, you will notice the screen flashing LSK in the lower right corner. This means that it's trying to establish a link with the PC. In most cases, the device that is doing the receiving must be ready first. Once LSK is flashing, start sending the file from the PC. You should see the screen change to input as the file is coming in. If it doesn't, the CNC never saw the program. If this happens, the problem is either with the PC, the cable, or the CNC. In the next step, I'm going to show you how to use a loopback tester to verify where the problem lies. There are some alarms that are associated with the RS-232 communication system. Let's take a look at some of these. The 085 alarm is a communications error. Check the protocol settings. Somebody is not agreeing on how they're going to talk. The 086 alarm, DR signal off. This one is normally caused by a problem with the cable. Verify the jumper wires. The 087 alarm, this is a common one. Buffer overflow. Remember that buffer that fills up on the CNC? 
Well, it started to fill up, so the CNC told the PC to stop transmitting. The PC didn't listen. This could be a problem with the protocol setup. Make sure that the PC is set to use software handshaking and not hardware. It's also possible that the CNC thought that it sent the stop command, but it never reached the PC. Perhaps the COM port is blown on the CNC and it can't send the data out. Simple enough to test. Set the PC up to receive a program and send it from the CNC. If you get the program, the CNC is quite capable of sending the X off command. It's likely a protocol setting. If you didn't get the file, the COM port is likely dead. Now any of these alarms can be caused by a defective COM port on the CNC. Next, we're going to take a look at how to test the COM port on both the PC and the CNC. So you're having an issue with communications. The problem could be on the PC, the cable, or the CNC. You'll need a couple of tools to determine the issue. First, build or purchase a loopback tester. This drawing shows the pinout. It's a simple device. Plug this into the serial port coming from the PC or USB to serial adapter. Run a loopback test. If the test shows good, the PC is fine. Next, plug another loopback into the DB25 on the end of the cable. Run the same test. This will verify the cable is good. Sounds like there might be a problem with the CNC COM port if it doesn't show up on one of these. Now we're going to use an RS-232 tester. Plug this into the DB25 connector on the CNC in line with the cable. This is what the LED pattern should look like while the machine is in edit mode. Start transmitting the parameters or a large program from the CNC to the PC. Note the LED pattern on the tester. You should see the transmit LED, labeled TD, pulsing on and off at a high rate of speed. If this is the case, the CNC is sending the data. If not, the COM port is likely dead. Repeat the test. Only this time, send a program from the PC to the CNC. This is the pattern you should see. You will need to contact TIE to have the COM port repaired if it's not working. Hopefully, you have a good backup already. If not, the recovery could take a long time. You will need to write down all the settings if you don't have a backup. This could take hours. In the next sessions, we're going to be taking a look at backing up and doing a full memory restoration on a variety of different types of controls. RS-232 hasn't really changed that much from the oldest model to the newest ones. The primary difference that you're going to find is how to set up the protocol. My name is John Robbins. Please contact me if you have any questions. Thank you.